you. That was one of the weirdest interviews I've ever conducted. Donald Trump will go, go be ahead. back in office in August. What I'm talking about, Steve, is what I have been doing since January 9th. All the evidence I have, everything is going to go before the Supreme Court and the election of 2020 is going bye-bye. I, it was an attack by other country communism coming in. I don't know what they're going to do with what after they pull it down, but it's how, how, but hang, hang, on, on, hang on a second. Hold hang, on. Hang, Donald hang, Trump will go, go be ahead. back in office in August. with your Twitter account and the uh, company page? Well, first, mine was taken down because we have all the election fraud with these Dominion machines. We have 100% proof. And then I, when they took it down um, uh, about my, three weeks my, ago, I, and then I, when I put it back up, my personal, I put it. It was a Mike, uh, thank integrity. you very much. Mike, Mike I, you're talking about machines uh, that, that we at Newsmax have not been able to verify any of uh, those kinds of allegations. We just want to let people know that there's nothing substantive that we've seen. And let me read you something there. While there were some clear evidence of some cases of vote fraud and election irregularities, the election results in every state were certified, and Newsmax accepts the results as legal and final, the courts have also supported that view. So right. we so, wanted to so talk to you about place. canceling you suppress, culture, you if you will. Me. We don't want you to relitigate the, like the, the wait, 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 uh, allegations wait, wait, that you're wait. making, I'm, Mike, I'm, because I'm we, we, the, we understand where you are. So let me ask you this. Do you think that this should be temporary because it appears to be permanent? Could you make an argument that it is temporary? What? <laughs> What? Could you make an argument that this could be a temporary banning rather than permanent? No, I want it to be a permanent because, you know what? They did this because I'm revealing all the evidence on Friday of all the election fraud with these machines. So I'm sorry if you okay. think it's not uh, Mike, real. Mike, I, I, can I ask our producers, can we uh, get out of here, please? Uh, I, I don't want to have to keep going over this. Actually, we at Newsmax Mike, have not been able wait, to verify any of those wait allegations. Wait, that you're, you're, Mike, oh, hold on a second. Everybody hold on a second. Mike, Mike, hold on one second. Uh, let's talk a little bit about just what is happening overall. We are looking at every bad faith actor that has deliberately created and propagated a falsehood about Dominion and, and, and the processes that we were involved in. Our ballots get calculated, many of them outside the United States, and are completely open to hacking, completely open to change, and it's being done by a company that specializes <laughs> in voter fraud. Our legal team is looking at frankly everyone and we're not ruling anybody out. No evidence has been offered that Dominion or Smartmatic used software or reprogrammed software that manipulated votes in the 2020 election. Were you threatened? I would say it was a very uncomfortable conversation. Well, I look at it this way. The first time we have an excuse, there were about 100,000 deaths that came from that original surge. All of the rest of them, in my mind, could have been mitigated or decreased substantially. When 
I knew I was being watched. Everybody inside was waiting for me to make a misstep so that they could, I, I guess, remove me from the, the task force. What we're seeing today is different from March and April. It is extraordinarily widespread. It's into the rural as equal urban areas. This epidemic right now is different and it's wide, it's more Duncan. widespread Duncan. and it's both rural and urban. That was a very difficult time because um, everybody in the White House was upset with that interview um, and the clarity that I brought about the epidemic. I can tell just by reading your face, that was a really tough time. What, what happened? Well, I got called by the president. What does he say? Well, I think you've heard other conversations that people have posted um, with the president. I would say it was even more direct than what people have heard. It was very uncomfortable, very direct, and very difficult to hear. Were you threatened? I would say it was a very uncomfortable conversation. I don't think I'm going to be doing it. transition and here at the White House, anytime that the president has an event where he is given a list of reporters to call on, Fox is the only member of the five network TV pool that has never been on the list in front of the president. And I'm just curious if that is an official administration policy. We're here having a conversation, aren't we? Yes. But and do I president. take questions from you every time you come to the briefing room? Yes, but I'm Has the president taken president. questions from you since you came in since you he came into office? Unfortunately, yes or no? Only when I have shouted after he goes through his whole list and the president has been very generous with his time with Fox. I'm just curious about this list that he is given. So the only member of the five network pool never on it dating back to when he resumed in-person events in Wilmington during the end of the campaign. Well, I would say that I'm always happy to have this conversation with you, even about your awesome socks you're having on today, you wearing today, and have a conversation with you even when we disagree. The president's taking your questions, and I'm looking forward to doing Fox News Sunday this Sunday for the third time in the last few months. I watch some of the shows. I watched Liz McDonald. She's fantastic. I watched uh, Fox Business. Uh, I watched uh, Lou Dobbs last night, Sean Hannity last night, Tucker last night, Laura. I watched uh, Fox and Friends in the morning. You watch these shows, uh, you don't have to go too far into the details. They cover things that are, it's really an amazing thing. John Solomon should get the Pulitzer Prize. How about these fraudulent writers at the New York Times? They get Pulitzer Prize and they got it all wrong. Now the people that were right, like Sean Hannity and 
Rush Limbaugh. Laura Ingram and Tucker Carlson. Judge Janine and Waters. My Waters. And frankly, the best show by far in the morning is Fox and Friends. Also got the best rating. And Lou Dobbs, how about Lou Dobbs? Is this something like Biden's Mark of the Beast? Because that is really disturbing. They want you to be required to have something called a COVID passport. And this, this would mandate your ability to be able to travel, your ability to be able to go to events, your ability to be able to buy and sell. And I asked the question earlier today, is this something like Biden's mark of the beast? Because that is really disturbing. If you're going to come into the football game or the baseball game or the concert, you need your vaccine passport because we're trying to do a good job to keep everyone safe. This is what the Biden administration is trying to talk to these private companies into doing. Well, let's analyze that. You see, it's still the same thing. It's still fascism or communism, whatever you want to call it, but it's, in, it's coming from private companies. So I have a term for that. I call it corporate communism. Can hit all all parts of society and so naturally um, the government um, is involved but unlike other parts of the world um, the government here is not viewing its role as the place to create a passport uh, nor a place to hold the data uh, of of citizens uh, we view this as something that the private sector um, is doing and will do what's important to us and we're leading an interagency process right now to go through um, the, these uh, details uh, are that some important criteria be met. Our role is to help ensure that any solutions in this area should be simple, free, open source, accessible to people both digitally and on paper, and designed from the start to protect people's privacy. If you just saw our Matt Gates interview, that was one of the weirdest interviews I've ever conducted. Tell us what the truth is from your perspective. It is a horrible allegation and it is a lie. The New York Times is running a story that I have traveled with a 17 year old woman and that is verifiably false. People can look at my travel records and see that that is not the case. What is happening is an extortion of me and my family involving a former Department of Justice official. On March 16th, my father got a text message demanding a meeting wherein a person demanded $25 million in exchange for making horrible sex trafficking allegations against me go away.
I'm not the only person on screen right now who's been falsely accused of a terrible sex act. You were accused of something that you did not do, and so you know what this feels like. You know the pain it can bring to your family, and you know how it just puts people on defense when you're accused of something so salacious and awful, but it did not happen. You just referred to a, a mentally ill viewer who accused me of a sex crime 20 years ago. Um, and it, of course it was, it was not true, I never met the person. I can say that actually you and I went to dinner uh, about two years ago, your wife was there and I brought a friend of mine, you'll remember her, and she was actually threatened by the FBI, told that if she wouldn't cop to the fact that somehow I was involved in some pay for play scheme, uh, that she could face trouble. I don't remember the, the woman you're speaking of or the context at all. I know that there was a demand for money in exchange for a commitment that he could make this investigation go away along with his co-conspirators. They even claim to have specific connections inside the Biden White House. Now, I don't know if that's true. They were promising that Joe Biden would pardon me. Obviously, I don't need a pardon. So they're saying there is a 17-year-old girl who uh, you had a relationship with. Is that true? And who are they? Who is this girl? What are they talking about at uh, the New York Times? The person doesn't exist. I have not had a relationship with a 17-year-old. That is totally false. I really saw this as a deeply troubling challenge for my family on March 16th when people were, you know, talking about a, a minor and that there were pictures of me with child prostitutes. Uh, that's obviously false. There will be no such pictures because no such thing happened. You just saw our Matt Gates interview. That was one of the weirdest interviews I've ever conducted. I don't think that clarified much. <laughs>